What is up, everyone? Welcome to the Fun with Friends podcast. I hope you're all doing well and staying safe. My name is Alan, and I'm your host. Joining me on today's episode is Geneva. She is the founder of Unwrap Your Map, and we are uh, going to be chatting about travel today. So thanks so much for joining me. Thanks. I'm glad to be here. We recorded some recently and it was super fun talking about all these things. So I'm excited to go for round two. Yes, Geneva is back, back, back again. She's kind enough to be a returning guest on the podcast. I think she's going to give some of our, I, I, I call them MVPs, most valuable podcasters. I might have to start doing like an MVG, maybe like most valuable guest award for those that have been on the guest for, for like a certain number of episodes. So you're, you're in the running now. And the last episode we recorded was um, in season two, and it was episode 10, I think. So if you're interested in learning kind of more about Geneva's background story and how she got into travel coaching, I would highly recommend that everyone go and check out that episode. And she also shares some amazing travel kind of tips and tricks in that episode as well. So definitely go uh, and check out season two, episode 10. The fantastic and yet terrible thing about having guests like Geneva is that they have tons of information to share. And an hour is not nearly enough time to get into everything. Geneva and I thought that we would put together a fun little series of four to five episodes called Travel Snacks that are going to be short 30-minute episodes centered around a specific travel topic. And this is the first of your travel snacks. So we hope you enjoy it. And Geneva, I am super pumped to do these with you. Oh, I'm so incredibly excited. And the fact that we named it travel snacks is just like the best. It's the icing on the cake for me because that's also one of my favorite things about traveling is the snacks you bring along the way. So (laughs) exactly. Little bite-sized treats to get you through your day. Yeah. Super pumped. So it's been, oh my, let's see. It's not, it hasn't quite been a full year yet I don't think since we last recorded to each other with each other but it's been quite a while what have you been up to lately what have you what you've been doing yeah well I've definitely uh, continued working on my travel coaching business unwrap your map but I also decided that I was in need of an adventure especially with everything that was going on in the world and with things being shut down for a while I was looking for something fun and exciting to get me pumped up again until international things started moving so I actually took a seasonal job out in Colorado and so I've been living just at the base of the Rocky Mountains and I'm working up top on the mountain as a store manager for a retail Detail, um, operation up there. And so I'm working every day at 12,000 feet and it's been quite the adventure and it's cool because my housing and my food are provided and didn't need to sign a lease, didn't need to become a resident, kind of just came out here and took the job for the summer and got a couple, couple months left. And then, um, looking at heading out to Spain after that. So yeah, all good things happening. <laughs> nice. And it, it sounds like it's beautiful as we were prepping to record this episode, Geneva looked out her window and there was a deer there just hanging out, laying under the tree. Taking a nap under the tree. I can see him right now. (laughs) I mean, that's, that's one of the great things about jobs like that, especially working for a park service or, you know, the visitor center. Those are always kind of fun jobs when housing is provided. Always. Yeah. (laughs) It's a good, it's a good little mini adventure. It's something that I kind of wish I'd started doing sooner, actually, like in between travels or, Mm -hmm. you know, during summers at at college and stuff like that. I kind of wished I'd done something like this sooner because now, you know, it's the perfect, it's the perfect in between adventure. So, yeah. (laughs) So besides traveling all the way out to Colorado, have you been able to do any other kind of like little trips or adventures between working? Not a ton. I'll be honest. I'm working a lot. And so a lot of my uh, mini adventures have been kind of local. We took a trip out mm-hmm. to the Great Sand Dunes recently. And at one point I flew out to Seattle and drove a car back here to the Denver area to kind of have for the summer. And so I took a very speedy mini road trip mm-hmm. and I got to pass through Idaho and Montana, which were two states I'd never been to before. So that was super fun. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, I'm just working in and enjoying life in my off days and checking out the park and all these good mm-hmm. things. So it's been good. Yeah, that that drive 
from Washington back to the Midwest is especially through Montana. So I've done that drive many times. I used to work out in Washington state and driving through Montana is one of my least favorite things because it's <gasps> the longest fucking state in the world. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know, but it's, it was honestly, Montana <laughs> is the one state I've been dying to visit since I was a kid. I don't know why, but ever since I was about 10 or 11, I've just been infatuated with Montana and been like, I can't wait to get there. And this was a very speedy drive through, but it was it ticked all my boxes and I was so excited that I stopped off at some roadside um, gift shop and bought a sweater and a sticker. And I, I never buy souvenirs <laughs> like that. I never do that, but I'd always wanted to go to Montana. So now I've got oh, this really it. awesome green Montana sweatshirt and I'm loving it. So it is a long state, but it's a beautiful it's, state. It's one of those where you like, you keep dry, you're like, how many hours have I been in this <laughs> state? <laughs> Are we there yet? <laughs> Get me out of here. Yeah. Idaho, it can be beautiful though. Like Northern Idaho, I don't know which part of Idaho you came through, but Northern Idaho is so freaking gorgeous. Yeah. Like, the Coeur d'Alene up there. I was gonna say Coeur d'Alene. Was yeah, it's gorgeous to drive through there. I was like, where am I? I felt like I'd been transported somewhere totally different. I was like, this beautiful. reminds me of How Long Bay in Vietnam. Mm-hmm. Like, where am I? I have some of the prettiest and well done rest areas as well because mm. it's kind of still in the wilderness and it's just I don't know it's, yeah it's pretty pretty stunning actually I'm a pretty fan beautiful of northern Idaho southern Idaho uh, yeah it could pass <laughs> very very flat remind me a lot of Nebraska that's probably yeah why. <laughs> yeah Oh my gosh. Well, I am I am so excited that you were able to take the time out of your insanely busy schedule at the park to do this first travel snacks with us. And the travel snack of the day is going to be budgeting. That's what we're talking about today. And I'm excited to have you share your knowledge on budgeting with other people because we, I, you actually were my travel coach for a bit when I was planning a trip to Ireland in uh, March, which I didn't end up taking, which was a good thing, but it was a result of our travel coach sessions because our budgeting conversations helped me realize that I was not as prepared (laughs) as I thought I was for doing an extended stay abroad. Although I didn't get to go, the conversations were extremely useful and brought up a lot of budgeting things that I had not even considered. So I know that you have a shit ton of information to share when it comes to budgeting and some amazing advice. So I'm, yeah, just super stoked to kind of get in, to get into it and, and, pick your brain about it a little bit. Yeah, definitely. It's a very important part of the conversation when it comes to planning any trip, really. I feel like budget is one of the first main things a person needs to prepare for. So I'm glad we're glad we're tackling that today. Yeah. And that's, that's the funny thing. I think probably for most people, like budgeting is one of the first things they think of and because it is super important when it comes to travel. And in my instance, like I thought I had a good plan I thought I had put enough money aside and had like really thought through, okay, I'm going to go and I'm going to travel for three months. And these are the places that I kind of want to visit and all that, you know, like thought I had it together, but it became very apparent through our conversations that I did not have it together. One of the things I wanted to, to ask you, because I know I made probably a lot of like rookie budgeting mistakes, but what are some of the common budgeting mistakes that people make when they are traveling, planning for long-term or extended travel abroad. Yeah, it's funny because a lot of people handle this very differently. And I'll be honest, there's there are so many different ways a person could handle the budgeting conversation. But I think people people either overshoot or way undershoot. And it's funny because you don't often know that until you're talking to them. And, and some people are already prepared and thinking, I need a ton of money. And you're like, well, actually, you probably won't need half that, you know. And then there's other people that are like, this should do me, right? And you're like, uh, absolutely not. <laughs> like, so that's always funny. But I think. I think a big part of it is maybe not budgeting for the right things. There's a lot of people that, you know, say, okay, I've budgeted for this, that, and the other, and they'll write out a list and they'll tell me what that, what they've included in a budget. But what I find is that they haven't included the things that they know are their must do's or their must haves. And everybody likes to spend their money on different things, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think you have the people that like to spend their money on entertainment. So whether it's concerts or movies or, you know, dining, going out, having drinks, eating nice meals. And then there's other people who just want to spend it on shopping and souvenirs, you know, whatever it is, you know, activities in my case, I tend to, you know, boating trips or skydiving or bungee jumping, you know, you have to know what it is that is going to be most important to you that, you know, 
that you're going to 100% want to be able to not miss out on that activity, whatever mm-hmm. it is. And you have to be able to budget in for that as well. So whether it's food and drink, you know, if you're going to want to be eating out, you should probably check the price of restaurants in the area. You know, there's depending on where you're going in the world, obviously these prices can totally vary. But if meals and drinks out are something that's really important to you and you're going to want to be able to enjoy that when you're abroad, it really helps to do some research ahead of time and find out what are the going rates for meals at a restaurant? You know, is tipping part of the culture? You can have to prepare for tipping your tour guides or tipping at restaurants and kind of thinking about things that you would normally spend your money on here and then kind of factoring in whether or not that's going to be necessary abroad. Because sometimes it's not actually tipping is not in, you know, culturally everywhere. That's something that's very American in some cases, but there are other places where you would be expected to tip. And so it helps to kind of factor in these little details, but also know which things are most important to you and which things you're not really going to want to compromise on. Because I think it's easy to assume the best in some cases and say, oh, this will probably be fine. But you also don't want to get there and think, oh, well, I didn't really budget for a nice meal and I love nice meals, but I guess I just have to have noodles today. Or I guess I have to eat at the 7-Eleven, you know, and <laughs> it's, that can also change your trip. So I think it's really important to know what it is that's important to you and make sure that you've, you've allotted a budget for that. Most importantly, you know, you're a accommodation, your transportation, your flights in particular, and your food. Those are things that you will, no matter what, you're going to need on any trip. Wherever you go in the world, you have to get yourself there. You have to get around once you're there and you've got to eat and sleep and you need to make sure that you've budgeted for those things as well. More often than not, those are your most expensive things that you're going to have to allot money for. But if you do some research ahead of time, I think you can find ways to make sure that you've accounted for the right things and all the necessary things as well. Yeah. yeah, and that, that was one of the mistakes I made that you kind of mentioned was not thinking about what expenses I have here that are going to go with me abroad. Yes. Like that was the thing that ended up getting me. So, you know, like taking into consideration, like, are you paying rent somewhere? For me, it was student loans. Like I did not think about the fact that, yeah, I might be abroad, but I still have to pay my student loans, which sounds really dumb. But in my mind, I was like, I'm going to Ireland, I'm doing this, like whatever. And I didn't think about the money that was going to be coming out to pay for my like normal US based expenses. Yeah. 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 And And that's a big one I made. (laughs) Yeah. You know, it's funny, because in some cases, you know, and everyone's situation is different. Again, some people are leaving their life behind in the US and going away for an extended period of time and won't have that rent or those utilities or, you know, bills of certain kind. But then there's others who are just going for two or three months. So they're probably still paying rent. They're probably still paying insurance on their car or for a parking space or, you know, student loans, all these things, you know, so while everyone's situation is different, it's important to know, okay, what are the things that I'm going to need to keep paying from home, even when I'm away from home, Mm -hmm. because those are sometimes large expenses that have to be factored into your budget. Yeah. People that, so like I was going, I was planning like a three month trip. Do you like, do you recommend that people kind of start planning from like a financial aspect and like budgeting for longer trips fairly early? Like as soon as they know that they're going or like how early do you recommend people start planning for these long trips? Yeah, that's a funny one. The sooner, the better, honestly, because the more time you give yourself, the easier it's going to be. If you give yourself a long period of time to save X amount of dollars, it might be easier to save that. But if you give yourself a short period of time to save that same amount of money, it's going to be more stressful. So I always think the more time you give yourself, the better. So as soon as you know, depending on how far out that is, doesn't hurt to start planning then. If you want to give yourself a little bit more time, make sure you're just mapping it out, looking at it on a calculator, on a map, whatever it is, and say, okay, this time frame, this is what I want to save. How can I divide that up and, and find a feasible plan to save that in the right amount of time? But I do think more time is always better because we all know money doesn't buy happiness, mm-hmm. but you do need it to survive. And it especially helps to have it if you want to do fun stuff as well and not just survive. So I think we we all, you know, we all recognize it's a necessity. And I think mm-hmm. it's always more comfortable for almost anyone. I would say it's more comfortable going on a trip when you feel financially prepared because it makes it a more enjoyable time. You can relax a little bit. You're not stressed about your finances all the time. You don't have to be keeping an eye on a calculator or your bank every five minutes. So the more time you can give yourself, the better. I think just because it it does allow you the opportunity to possibly save more and and 
prepare a larger budget so that you don't have to stress while you're there. For listeners that are thinking about going on a longer trip and need maybe a little assistance with the financial planning, Geneva has these dope ass budget worksheets that you can use to kind of help you through that financial planning process. And the best part is that they are free. If you are interested in grabbing one of those financial worksheets, you can head on over to Geneva's Instagram at Unwrap the Map and uh, pick one of those up. And I would highly recommend using those to start the planning process. So besides using one of your planning worksheets, financial planning worksheets, what are um, some other ways that people can plan and prepare for these, these longer trips? Couple, couple things. I think the big thing is looking at all your current expenses and seeing what it is that you might be able to cut out. So I think something in particular that always fascinates me is coming back to the US, I forget that people pay $75 to $85 a month for their cell phone service. Mm -hmm. And I know that's pretty standard here, but to give you an idea, I pay $15 a month and it's just fine. So you can cut a lot of money if you're willing to change up your providers for certain things or cut out certain streaming devices or maybe get a family plan and share it with a friend. That way you can cut down on some of your expenses for your streaming devices or your music uh, providers or your cell phone service, you know, whatever it may be. But to give you an idea, moving over to a prepaid phone service like what I used is actually a good way to cut 50 to $60 out of every single month. And that's money you can put straight towards your trip. And if you're not using your phone all day, every day, if you're someone who's kind of on it for, you know, little bits and pieces and family and friends and whatever else, you could probably very well do with just a, you know, a, a more basic prepaid service and save yourself a lot of money. And not to mention when you're traveling longer term to maintain that expense while abroad is a lot easier. Mm -hmm. So to give you an idea, I don't mind paying $15 a month and then leaving the country for three, six months, even a year, because $15 a month in my eyes is a small price to pay to maintain your phone number, but not be paying, you know, crazy amounts when you're not actually using that phone number. And so coming back and knowing that you've got cell phone service for that same $15 a month is a pretty reasonable price to pay. Whereas if you're locked into a 70 to $75 a month cell phone bill, it becomes a huge expense to be paying while you're abroad. Mm -hmm. And and then to know that you come back and have it is great, but to have paid $70 a month to maintain it is, yeah. it's a lot of money. <laughs> so honestly, I, I'm a big fan of, you know, cutting to these prepaid services and then also just doing research about prices, you know, finding out what the local rates are for wherever you're going for food, for drinks, for, again, for these activities that you may or may not want to be doing while you're away and just get an idea of preparing how much it is that you'll need to be allotting for these things while you're away. So a little bit of research about prices for, you know, local local prices for where you're going, but also cutting out unnecessary expenses at home just to try and start saving money leading up to the experience, but also to have a good idea of what kind of money you'll need for that experience once you're away. I think the cell phone tip, that was one, I think we we talked about in, in the original episode that we did about how you travel, or maybe we talked about it during the coaching sessions. Something else you can do is you get a new SIM card when you're in a new country. And that mm -hmm. also helps with like the whole international fees and everything. And again, if you're on a pay per use or whatever phone plan, but when you're when you're using one of those services, like you said, it's it's yeah, you're saving yourself like fifty plus dollars. A yeah, month. yeah, and and to give you an idea. When I was living in Australia, I paid about $25 a month for my phone service in Australia. When I was in New Zealand, it was about $20 a month. And when I lived in Cambodia, it was $5 a month. So think about any one of those numbers. Think about adding that to your 15 a month that you're paying back home. You're basically paying $15 to hold your number in the US mm -hmm. while you're paying $5 to have a local-based number, which means that you're not paying some international roaming fees for your US-based phone. So mm -hmm. it really, I mean, at the end of the day, you're spending 20 bucks for phone service in two countries. I mean, why? <laughs> it's, it's yeah. mind blowing sometimes. I actually, and it's funny because some travelers don't realize too, that if you switch to some of these prepaid providers, sometimes they offer little incentives. You know, if you mm -hmm. refer a friend, you can get a credit to help pay for your bill. And it's, it's little things like this that can actually help you save money while you're traveling, but even in some cases make money. The, the phone company I use now is offering a hundred dollars. If you refer a friend, I mean, a hundred dollars. 
is a good, it's a pretty good incentive to hook someone else up with cheap phone service. So it becomes a way that it's kind of a win-win, you know, you can save yourself money, but also earn some money in the process. No, that's, a, that's one of those like amazing kind of like a, a weird travel tip that you probably don't like, I know when I travel, I'll never let, well, I do think about my phone service, but it's like, well, how much am I going to have to pay for these international calls or what do I have to do so I can use my phone when I'm abroad or whatever. And it personally has never crossed my mind to try one of these like prepaid phone plans or the SIM card thing. I don't know. I feel like that's like, Oh, it saves, it saves a ton of money. <laughs> yeah. And people don't realize it too, but you basically just, you learn how to deal with your own phone and manage your own phone yourself. You know, I feel like for a long time in the U S people were kind of locked into their carriers and their providers, and they were mm-hmm. the only ones that knew you had a SIM card and knew how to get it out. Yeah. But <laughs> I know how to, I know how to pop my own SIM card out now. And I pop in a new one, I close it up. Then I've got six SIM cards sitting in the back of my phone right now, just taped to my phone case and I swap them out wherever I go, but I save myself a ton of money by doing that. So yeah, definitely good to know. So smart. (laughs) smart. Do you know what goes great with listening to podcasts? If you said a warm drink, you're absolutely right. Just imagine you're sitting back, you're listening to your favorite podcast, all while holding a nice cute ass mug in your hand with your favorite hot beverage in it. If you're wondering, where can I get a mug like that? Well, you're in luck. You can swing by the Coots Creations Cute Coffee and Tea Mugs Etsy shop. They've got everything from enamel coffee cups to travel mugs, all featuring adorable original artwork. Head over to etsy.com slash shop slash Coots Creations and use promo code WANDER for 10% off any mug. So we've talked about kind of the planning to get into your travel abroad and like what people can do to prepare for their trips. Now, I want to get a little bit into what are some ways that um, once you're abroad, you can continue to, you can extend your trip if you wanted to like financially. So, you know, if I originally planned for like a month abroad and then I was like, oh my God, I love it here. I want to stay for another month or two, like what are some, some ways that I can, I can make that work financially? Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's like a whole topic in itself. So I feel like we'll have to, you know, branch out into that one more, but a long story short, there's, there's always some really cool work exchange opportunities where you can work in exchange for your accommodations so that you're not actually paying for accommodation. There's some really cool work visas out there. Uh, U S passport holders don't have near as many as some other countries, but what Mm -hmm. we do have are some really cool opportunities that a lot of people still don't know about. So committing to a work visa so that you can work internationally in certain countries countries or do certain types of jobs. There's also, you know, remote positions that you can pick up. You can teach English online. You can, you know, use your skills to kind of monetize in different ways and and provide services to other either businesses or individuals. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of different ways to kind of find either local work or work that you can do from anywhere, but definitely tapping into work visas, also woofing experiences Mm -hmm. and work away, things like that. Those are really great ways to travel more places, but without really making a huge dent in your savings or in your budget, which is, they're really just good options for prolonging your travels. And I know this is, this is a topic that I think a lot of uh, our listeners will be interested in, especially again, personally, when it comes to visas, I find it so confusing and like a little daunting because there are, you know, for me, I'm always like, I don't want to pick the wrong thing. I don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to do it, like get denied or whatever. You know, that's a little anxiety, travel anxiety coming through, but I definitely want to hear more about how to work abroad and what opportunities are out there. So Geneva and I will be doing another episode of travel snacks that is focused on visas and working abroad and all, all the opportunities that are out there because I think, I know I was surprised to learn that there are so many different opportunities out there that you can do to stay abroad longer if you want to. So I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Me too. That's one of my favorite topics. So I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Could you, I mean, you've done it for like six years on and off. That's like what you've been doing, which is amazing. Yeah. And it was through all those opportunities I just mentioned too. So I'm really passionate about talking about them and helping other people find them because that's, that's part of how you manage to do these things for as long as you do. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, that'll be that'll be one of our upcoming episodes. So so if you're still a little hungry 
we got more travel snacks for you. Yeah, stay tuned <laughs> for that little treat. <laughs> yes. Before we wrap things up, I do have one final question for you. What advice that you haven't already given us would you give for to someone that is looking to travel abroad, especially for a, a longer trip? Yeah. So there's a couple of quick things that come to mind. First of all, I'll say, obviously in the whole budgeting context, you'll come up with a budget of some sort, but honestly, break it down to a daily matter and say, okay, what is it that I can give myself every day? And you might have to do that based on location. You might have a different daily budget for one location than you will for the next, if you're planning to go to multiple places, but basically break it down to a daily budget and just, you don't have to be marking it to a T, but just keep an eye on it throughout the day as you decide if you want to get a coffee or buy a souvenir or go for lunch, you know, just kind of be slowly, but surely racking it up in your head and say, how am I doing with my, you know, set number for the day. And if I'm doing good, great, splash out on this. If I'm, you know, if I need to be careful, then pick and choose which things you end up spending on. But it really does help to kind of have a daily number in your head Mm -hmm. every day, because it does just keep you more mindful of each expense that you have throughout the day and, and help you track your funds a little better. Aside from that, don't be afraid of local transportation. Honestly, local transportation is so beneficial in so many ways. I mean, it's usually one of the most affordable options. It's also the best way to really get to know the place and the people and and what life is actually like in the destination that you're visiting. So don't be shy about taking local buses. And sometimes it involves a little bit of, you know, language barrier and figuring things out, but that's all part of the experience too. And, you know, it's a great way to really help, help keep local economies going, but also get to know the place and save yourself a little bit of money in the process. So take advantage of local transport and last but not least, make friends with locals. The more people, you know, the easier it is to find more affordable things to do around town. So, you know, whether you're staying in a hostel or a hotel or eating at a local restaurant, talk to the people that are working there, make friends with them, you know, ask them questions about what it is they like to do in their spare time, what they do with their friends, let them know, say, you know, I've got this much and I'm trying to do something fun and adventurous, but I don't want to, you know, totally blow my whole budget. You know, do you have any recommendations? And not only does it make other people feel good to know that you want to know, you know, what their, what their expertise or point of view is on something, but it also, it just, again, connects you a little bit more with, with the local culture and, and also again, can save you some money too, to know what, what it is that locals do for fun and where they go. So a big part of the experience that I would definitely recommend. So yeah, make friends with locals, make sure you keep a daily budget in mind in your head throughout the day and take local transport. I want to thank you again for joining me. And is there anything that you're currently working on that you'd like to share with the listeners? Yeah. I mean, at this point I'm working on building some kind of DIY guides, basically kind of a a more guidebook version of the things that we kind of talk about in some of these little travel snacks and things, and, and just a way for people to kind of track it on their own and, and plan their own trips, you know, kind of DIY style. And so I'm working on that at the moment and I'm excited for whenever that comes out. So just stay tuned and, and yeah hoping people follow along on Instagram at unwrap your map just so they can kind of stay in the loop with what's going on. But yeah, big things come in. Yeah. And, and if any of our listeners are interested in doing a free travel consultation, or if you just have questions for Geneva, you can connect with her on Instagram. Again, that's at unwrap the map. Her website is www.unwrapthemap.com. And when you do your free consultations, what, what kind of, what does that entail? Yeah. So it's mostly a chance for me to kind of get to know you and for you to get to know me and to see if we're a good fit to kind of work together. And for me to hear a little bit more about your, your travel goals, what it is that you hope to accomplish, what it is that you're struggling with and why it is that you haven't accomplished it yet. And, and see if it's something that I can help you work through because chances are whatever it is, I've, I've been there, I've done it. And <laughs> so the, the, tra- the free travel chats are a chance for us to kind of connect and, and see what's going on and what it is that you want to accomplish and, and make sure that it's something I can help you with. And so it's, it's, it's just a conversation. It's a casual conversation with me. And then by the end of it, you know, we'll, we'll have an idea of where it is that you're trying to go with things and in what ways I might be able to help you. And there's, there's usually a follow-up email and some, you know, a PDF or two that might come with that, something that you can kind of use on your own time and then see if we want to set up an agreement to, to work together longer term to make sure that we can get you going wherever it is you're meant to be going. Amazing. As a former coachy <laughs> client, I'm not sure. I can vouch that Geneva is absolutely amazing at what she does and highly recommend. Yeah. If you have any travel questions, just reach out to her. She has a wealth of travel knowledge. So I, yeah, I just, thanks again for being on today and you will be back 
on the podcast soon with another travel snack. So I think the next one we're going to do is packing like a pro. So Ooh, yeah, my specialty. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Self-proclaimed packing professional. <laughs> <laughs> And if you have any questions for Geneva, you can send us a message or leave us a voicemail on our hotline. It's 252-419-6004. And we will cover your questions on the next Travel Snack episode. So uh, reach out to us through the hotline, on Instagram, whatever, and we will try to get to all of your questions. Thanks again, Geneva. Yeah, thanks for having me. This was so much fun. Yay, can't wait for the next one. Same. With that, get out there, try something new, and have some fucking fun. Bye. Bye. There you have it. Thanks, as always, for listening to this week's episode. Be sure to tune in for the next one. And if you are looking for some entertainment or you're bored, I highly recommend going back and listening to some of our previous episodes. You can follow the Fun With Friends podcast on Instagram at Fun With Friends Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at Fun Friends Pod One. We are also on Facebook. You can listen to the podcast on Anchor FM, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and Google Podcasts. As always, please like, rate, and review, and be sure to tell your friends about the podcast and get the word out there about it. And as always, my friends, go out there, try something new, and have some fucking fun. Bye!